Welcome everyone, today we'll talk about paths in Rust. This is a very important concept, it's very similar to what we have in the file system, but before doing that I want to do something that I, we never did so far. In modules we can also refer to crates that are binaries and not executables. How can I create in Rust a library? It's very simple and I love how this is done in Rust. We can do this in this way. Cargo new and we can call it uh, Rust uh, underscore paths uh, underscore live and then we can add an option dash dash lib. Let's see what's the difference here created the library Rust Paths Live, then I can step into this folder Rust Paths Live. Let's open this directory. It seems very similar to what we had so far. We have a cargo.toml, a .kitignore, but let's check the folder. Hmm. We don't have a main file, we have a lib.rs file. It's what is called binary create and not an executable create. And you see, here we have a sort of boilerplate just to test it out. We can remove it, we don't need it. We'll do something inside this library. And of course here we can't do cargo run, but we don't need it for this project. We'll just try cargo build. Now let's start talking about paths. What are paths in Rust? They are used when we have a module to identify an item. They can be used to identify a module, to identify structs, and arms, we have two different types of paths. We have absolute and relative. Let's take an example that's similar to what we did in the previous lesson here, and let's focus on what we see on line 9 and 12. For simplicity, I created a module inside the same file. We saw in the previous lesson that we can also, probably it's recommended, to have a module that is outside this file and is probably here in these folders. So in this case, we have this function, public function. Check line 9, we have create. This is similar to one when we have slash create and we have a root. It's similar to this. Front of house, hosting and add to waitlist. So we are referring here to the absolute path. Instead, when we use a relative path, we see we don't have this crate. It's similar to what we have when we have a relative path. You see, we don't have, for example, this slash. So if you are used to navigate in paths or you used paths also in other types of applications, web applications, probably you understand what we are talking about. There is not a way which is correct and another one which is wrong. It probably depends on what you want to do with your files and modules, for example, in the future. There are advantages for both of them. For example, an advantage of a relative path is that if we move it or we create or we move this whole module, this will always be relative to the same module and submodule. And the absolute, instead, it's better when we want to move it on a whole different place, but we want to keep the core structure. We have this module called front of house, and inside this module, this is a valid, we have another module. We have what is called submodule. If I type cargo build, do you think this will work or not? Okay, let's do cargo build and we have a error. Let's read module hosting is private. A module inside another module doesn't have automatically uh, the visibility. On line two, we can add pub, which stands for public. Now, do you think that this is enough? Do you think this will work if now I type cargo build? I'm trying to access this function called add to waitlist on line 3, which is inside this public module. We added the pub mod on line 2. If we type cargo build, again we have an error. Function add to waitlist is not publicly re exported. Private module. Function add to waitlist is private. And you see, they have, they are trying to say, hey, you should change this if you want this to be public. Let's add the pub here in front also of the function. And now it works. This is very important. The items and the paths inside a public module 
they are not public by default. We need to explicitly say what we want to be public inside a module and what we want to not be public. And of course, about visibility, what is inside this, of course, has the visibility on what is outside. They have the context. Okay, so we're talking about the visibility inside the module. But for example, here we have the visibility, for example, of the module front of house, of course, because we are in an inner module. Let's see another example. We have this function, let's say outside, and then we have this module. We are talking about using super. What is a super? to access a parent module. We are not talking about constructors and so on, so don't get confused by the super keyword. You can see this super keyword on line seven. A very easy way to understand super in a few seconds is very similar to when we do something like this. Check line three. It's like go up one module. You see here we have this module back of house here. We have a function inside this module and inside this uh, we have this cook order which is an inner function which is not public you see on line 10 we have super deliver order to use a function which is outside of the module of course the function has to exist we can just use super so basically it's just go up one level last two concepts are for structs and enums so we had dedicated multiple lessons about structs and enums so i'll not repeat everything about structs and enums for structs let's see this example this should be clear if you made one struct in rust so we have this module you can see from line 1 to uh, 15 and then we see a struct a public struct to be precise called breakfast and inside this struct we can have fields. A struct is a compound type that is basically used to define the blueprint of an object. And you can see here we have on line 3 pub toast. So the toast, which is a string, is public. And then we have something else, for example, a seasonal fruit, which is still a string, but here this is not public. It's very important to understand that we can have in the struct some fields that are public and some fields that are not. We have here the, an implementation of methods for a struct, which has the same name of the struct. This is not a coincidence, this is called like this, because inside here we can define methods for the struct that we just defined. Now, if we try to compile this cargo build, and you can see we have a couple of warnings because we are not using some fields, but here, for example, everything is, is working. In, instead, if we try to have something like this, so define define something for as for the seasonal fruit here. In this case, we have an error. We because this field on line four is not public. We can't decide. This is something that will be used internally and so on. For enums, you see we have a module with an enum, which is also public, uh, for example, appetizer, which can be a soup or salad, and we can use them uh, to eat at the restaurant. And this should work. Let's try cargo build. So this works. We have a couple of warnings, but it does work. The question is, can we have a single public field in an enum or not? Can we put here on line four a pub like, like we did in the struct? On line 4 we change the soup to pub soup. No. Visibility qualifier are not permitted here. We can't decide what is public and what is not inside an enum. And I like this approach. So when we have an enum, either we have a public enum that we can use outside the module or not. We use an enum just internally inside a module. In Rust enums they don't work as the structs do that we can choose what is public and what is private inside the type. And this is the end of the lesson about the paths in Rust. We'll probably will do more lessons in details because this is a very important part because we are using 
different files so when we'll create uh, some projects uh, we will take care and we will use the concepts that we are using but i really wanted to have a very basic and low level lesson about this because this is a part that i always struggle with when i when i use a language i want to understand how can i create a module like in java or in javascript to be honest is always different no matter what the language i think it's very hard to find two languages that have the same structure for external modules so in rust this is how they work I'm a, i really like the fact that you can define these libraries in a super easy way with the option dash dash lib and then inside this we can basically define modules here